We start today's virtual exploration at Tingewick in Buckinghamshire, then to Banbury in Oxfordshire, and then three sites in Warwickshire, Kyneton, Leamington and Rugby. We'll finish in Northamptonshire, just south of Daventry. Ferrers Patrick Loftus had fought in the First World War as an officer in the Grenadier Guards. In 1927, he bought Tingewick Rectory and the surrounding buildings from New College, Oxford. In the early 1930s, he learned to fly and established a small aerodrome just south of Tingewick on land owned by New College, Oxford. He also bought a gypsy moth, the very same bag moth we met in episode seven when owned by John Miles Bickerton at Denham. He owned the aircraft until 1950 although after the war it was kept at Kidlington in Oxfordshire. His private landing ground was listed in the 1938 AA Landing Grounds Guide. It didn't open after the Second World War and has now reverted to farmland. During the Second World War, an airfield was constructed immediately to the west of the old landing ground. Known as RAF Finmere, it was only open for three years, closing in the summer of 1945. However, the farmland was subsequently managed by William Napton, who was an enthusiastic private pilot. He reopened part of the east-west runway, and the field to the north of the runway was available for landing as well. Bill Napton kept his super cub at Finmere, and even Bagmoth came back as her owners had moved south from Scotland into Finmere village. The runway remains open for use today, although the grass field was gobbled up by the Finmere bypass. I last landed there in 1997 when, en route from Coventry to Northweald in the Twin Pioneer, I dropped into the Vintage Aircraft Club flying. The landing ground was available throughout the 1930s some three miles northwest of Banbury. Not much is known about it, although it was used by Alan Cobham and his National Aviation Day displays in 1932 and 1933. It is now once again farmland. John Verney, or more officially, the 20th Baron Willoughby de Brooke, learnt to fly at Sywell in the early 1930s. He established his own flying field just east of Kyneton Village and bought his Clem, which was unusual being powered by a Cirrus 3 engine and its wooden shed over from Sywell. As chairman of the British Clem Aeroplane Company, his stable included several aircraft of that make, including a BA Swallow, BA Eagle and BA Double Eagle. He also owned a Puss Moth. All these aircraft lived at Kyneton, except the BA Double Eagle, which was a big twin-engined monster. In due course, the wooden hangar was replaced by a metal one, built by Bolton and Paul, and his lordship bought his last aircraft, a Fairchild F-24, which he kept from November 1936 up until the outbreak of the Second World War. For many years, his lordship was Lord Lieutenant of Warwickshire, and during the Second World War, he served as a fighter controller, before becoming a director at the Air Ministry. He died in 1986. Like so many pre-war landing grounds, the site has returned to agriculture. The adjacent railway line, officially known as the Stratford Midland Joint Railway, but known more locally as the slow moulding and jolting, has also gone. However, one important artefact still remains. It is on private land and not readily viewable, so, as Biggles would say, best seen from top sides. Julius Bonnickson was the British-born son of a Danish horologist and inventor who had settled in Britain. Bonnickson enlisted as a mechanic in the Royal Flying Corps during the First World War 
and was commissioned in September 1918. In the early 1930s, he opened the Leamington Spa Aircraft Park at Bishop's Tatchbrook, some two miles southeast of Leamington Town. A flying school was soon opened, equipped with several gypsy moths, and privately owned aircraft were kept there too. This Fairchild 24 belonged to a young chap called John Profumo. Harold Brook, who we last met flying a Praga baby from England to South Africa, kept his Percival Gull at Leamington. He'd bought it from Jim and Amy Mollison, and in it broke the Cape Town to London record in May 1937. A somewhat surprising long distance flyer at Leamington was Miss Joan Parsons. She had learned to fly in 1933, being taught by the popular First World War pilot Tommy Rose. Her first aircraft was the Spartan three-seater. However, on inheriting some money, she bought the prototype Miles Sparrowhawk. On the 7th of May 1938, she set off for the Cape. Bonnickson said she was made of the right stuff, and she was, and in spite of many incidents and forced landings, arrived back at Leamington on the 11th of August 1938. Her next aircraft purchase, the prototype airspeed courier, on the 2nd of September 1939, was not so timely. The entire site was requisitioned by the Air Ministry shortly after the outbreak of the Second World War. The aircraft manufacturer Armstrong Whitworth, based in nearby Coventry, opened a repair station. The airfield, whilst plenty big enough for light aircraft, was far too small for the four-engine airliners that soon arrived. The results were inevitable. The airfield site was subsequently enlarged and used for servicing of RAF bombers until the end of the Second World War. The Second World War Bellman hangars and various other buildings remain on the site, but the airfield itself, of course, has returned to agriculture. Another YouTuber has made a film about the airfield. There's a lot of information in it. Link in the description. A landing ground was available at Lawford Heath Farm, Rugby, throughout the 1930s. It had no facilities, but being of a reasonable size and in an excellent location, it soon attracted Alan Cobham and his National Aviation Day displays. Displays were held annually from 1932 to 1935. Here we see Lord Lee, Lord Lieutenant of Warwickshire, after a flight with Captain Nash in the De Souter monoplane. These air-to-air -air photographs were taken during a display at Lawford Heath Farm. The aircraft are a Tiger Moth, the Airspeed Ferry, which was used for joyrides, and the Honourable Brian Lewis's Compa Swift. The site is still farmland today, although the subtopia of rugby creeps ever closer. As a note, RAF Church Lawford, 1941-1955, was built on land immediately to the west of this landing ground. Sir Henry Detterding, a Dutchman, was chairman for 36 years of Royal Dutch Shell Petroleum. His considerable wealth allowed him to buy real estate, and one of his properties was Newnham Grounds, a country house near Daventry. He was married three times, but had a son, also Henry, from his first marriage. The younger Henry and his wife Winifred learned to fly in a gypsy moth in the early 1930s. They set up a flying field at Newnham Grounds, complete with a shed that the gypsy would fit in with its wings folded. In time, the gypsy was sold and replaced by a fox moth, in which the Dettertings toured extensively. Sir Alan Cobham and his National Aviation Day displays visited Newnham Grounds in 1935. A Nazi sympathiser, Sir Henry Detterding, died in 1939. The Austrian corporal sent a wreath. His son was cut from different cloth. Despite being very wealthy and over the age of conscription, he joined the Fleet Air Arm as a sub-lieutenant. 
a forced landing in Norway, followed by a failed escape attempt, meant Henry was a prisoner of war for nearly five years. After the war, he returned to Union grounds and bought a Miles Messenger. In time, the Messenger was replaced by a pair of Cessna 182s. Henry Detiding died in 1975, but the airstrip continued in use until his son, Richard, also died. However, in 2004, the airstrip reopened and remains open to this day. The two hangars, the little one for the folding gypsy moth, and the much larger hangar for the other aircraft remain today as a fitting tribute to a very fine man. Thank you for watching.